We're going to continue with video solutions for the fall 2011 final exam. This is question two, and a psychiatrist is doing studies to affect uh, the effect of different therapies on the average time per month a patient has symptoms of a psychological disorder. And there are three uh, treatments uh, that are considered, uh, or therapies rather, medical, behavioral, and combining the two of them. And what the researcher wants to do uh, is to examine whether there's a, a difference between these three groups uh, and the time uh, that the patient experiences symptoms of the disorder. So seven patients receive the medical therapy, five get the behavioral, and eight get some kind of combination. Our first question asks us to uh, state whether this is an observational study or an experiment. Because there's an affirmative action going on here, the researcher is randomly assigning. This makes this an experiment. Letter B asks, as the psychiatrist is comparing the three therapies with respect to the length of time each month a patient experiences symptoms, he does an ANOVA. Uh, part of the output is given below, and we're tasked with filling in the blanks. Um, so first we have letter I, which is the sum of squares. I've pulled up here, oops, our formula card. Yellow formula card, I think, for ANOVA. And we can see uh, if what we're looking for is the between group sum of squares, that's going to equal uh, the sum of squares total minus the SS error. And that'll give us the difference. In other words, the total is the sum of between groups and within groups. So to find the between groups, I just have to do 65.753 minus 16.5, which gives me 49.253. Roman numeral at 2 asks for degrees of freedom uh, between groups. And that's just our number of groups. Um, again, we can look at the yellow formula card just to make sure. Uh, but that's just going to be K, the number of groups, minus 1. We have three treatments here. Minus 1 is going to give us 2. Okay, and then total is going to be our total sample size, minus 1. I can see that on the formula card. Degrees of freedom, total sample size, minus 1. And we had 7 who received medical therapy, 5 who got behavioral, and 8 to receive a combination. So 7 and 8 is 15, plus 5 is 20. 20 minus 1 for our degrees of freedom is 19. And lastly, Roman numeral at 4 asks for the F statistic. Again, I'm going to resort to my yellow card, which tells me that F equals MS groups uh, divided by MS error. So I'm going to do 24.626 divided by 0.971. And if I do that, I get 25.3615. Okay, on to letter C, which says that one of the assumptions is that the population variances are equal, and if they are the same, then they equal a common value. Provide an estimate of the common population variance. And note that it's asking for the common population variance as opposed to standard deviation. And just as a reminder, variance equals your standard deviation squared. So let's take a look at our yellow formula card. And indeed, we see here that the pooled standard deviation, if we square it, so that would be our variance, just equals the MS error. So if variance equals standard deviation squared, and that equals the MS error, and my MS error equals 0 0.971, that is my final answer. Letter D says, based on the ANOVA table, at a 10% level, what is the correct decision and conclusion? Well, my significance level, my p-value, is incredibly small. So it's definitely lower than 10%, which means I'm going to reject the null hypothesis, which means these two are out of the running. And remember, before I even look at my, my answers, for a ANOVA test, what we're doing is checking to see if the means are equal across populations. And if I reject the null hypothesis, that means at least one population mean is different, which is this first option here, and not the second. All right. Letter E says that a Tukey multiple comparison test was conducted, and using the output from it, we need to decide if the medical therapy and the behavioral therapy treatments are different in terms of the population mean. 
Okay, remember we use two keys to look at the confidence intervals. And what we want to see is, uh, in this question, we're asking to see if these two treatments are different. So medical therapy versus behavioral. Here's a confidence interval for medical versus behavioral, which means this is my confidence interval. Okay, notice that because it goes from a negative to a positive number, that zero is in the interval. And if zero is in the interval, that means it's possible there's no difference between those two means. So does it appear that they're different? No. And the reason why is because zero is in interval. And lastly, for letter F, provide a 99% confidence interval for the population mean time with symptoms for the medical therapy group alone, in which the seven patients report an average of 9.17 days. Now we have to be careful here because we can't just use our regular confidence interval formulas. We need to check in with the yellow card, which gives me this formula. Okay. So if I plug those values in, it's 9.17 days. Actually, I need to resort to it. Plus or minus T star. Plus, let me erase that. It's a little messy. plus or minus Z star. And our Z star for a 99% confidence interval, again, is something I can find from the yellow card. If I scroll up, oops, scroll down rather, to table A2, which is going to be on its side. Sorry about that. Okay, I need to know my degrees of freedom, and for the degrees of freedom for ANOVA, sorry to keep scrolling so much, the degrees of freedom for ANOVA is given by, for our confidence interval, is capital N minus K, which is the total sample size minus K, and in this question my total sample size was 20, and in my group, I had three groups, which means it's 20 minus 3 is 17 is my degrees of freedom. Okay, so now going back to the table I need, table A2, I just said my degrees of freedom was 17, and I want a 99% confidence interval, so that's going to be 2.9. Okay. So 9.17 plus 2 point, what did I just say, 9, times, and my formula card told me what? Oops. The pooled standard error over the square root of the sample size for my group. So the pooled... Remember, we looked it up here. The pooled standard deviation squared was 0.971. So to get the standard deviation, I have to take the square root of that. And then divide that by my sample size, which was 7. If I do that, my answer comes out to be 8.09 to 10.25.